Today, we have a very special guest. I have grown up with this person and she has been on an incredible adventure all the way across the world studying in China. She goes to college in Shanghai. Today, we are gonna be talking about everything college. Zoe is a senior rising. So she has one more year of college, which is absolutely insane. In honor of grad season, I thought it would be appropriate to do a little graduation series. I am two years out of college now. I don't even know what to think about it, but Zoe has one year left and I want all the tea on how she's feeling and how this past school year has gone for her. I have two other episodes planned for this little series. In honor of grad season, I thought it would be fitting to dive into one year pre-grad graduation itself and the post-grad life. Without further ado, let's welcome my wonderful, beautiful sister, Zoe Calameros. Hi, Zoe. Hello. <laughs> welcome. Thank you. I haven't spoken to you since you got back so that we could save it for this. <laughs> yeah. So what's up? Nothing much. How was your school year? It was good. I got a 3.9 last semester. Slay! Which is the first time I've gotten that close to a 4.0. Oh my god, yes. So, yeah. That took a lot of energy. so good. So I started in New York. This year? I thought you did China for the whole year this year. No, I was in New York last semester. Oh. What? (laughs) I thought you knew that! Time is... fake. (laughs) I don't know what the fuck. You've been everywhere for college. So, I can't remember. Sh- I can't keep up. Okay. I know that your first year was online. That's all I really remember. And then your second. No, no, no. <laughs> so, okay, so. So, not even. Fall freshman, New York. Spring freshman, online. Fall and spring sophomore, China. Fall junior, New York. So, I went to New York after this summer. I had my job at the gym. I had my classes. I was excited to be in New York, but it was like a bit of a rough time, that section of junior year. So, it was like a little bit difficult. Oh my god, yeah, that was this year. Yeah. Wait, we should talk about that. Oh, we should? If, you com- if you're comfortable. Okay, yeah, sure. Okay, well, <laughs> first of all, where do you go to school? New York University, Shanghai. Yeah, explain that. Because whenever I'm talking to people and they're asking, like, where does your sister go to school? I'm like, NYU Shanghai. And they're like, what? Never heard of that. And then I have to explain the whole thing where it's like they have multiple campuses and it's not like exactly NYU, but it is because you get both degrees, right? So let's hear it from you. So I go to NYU, but NYU has a system kind of like the UC schools where their main campus is New York, but they also have separate schools but in the same system in Shanghai and Abu Dhabi and those are different from the other sites because Shanghai, Abu Dhabi, and New York are the three that grant you degrees. So my home campus is in China but I have also attended the one in New York. That's how that works. How did you come to the decision that you wanted to go to the one in China? Um, Well, I applied first to the one in New York. Like a lot of people, that was my number one. Um, And then I just put number two, Shanghai, because I was like, well, it doesn't hurt because I don't have to do an extra application for it. So I thought I might just try. But when I got my college acceptances back, it was like, congratulations. I was like, oh! Yes. And then I read the next several lines. You've been admitted to NYU Shanghai. I was like, wait a minute. And then I was like, wait just one second. Uh, So I was kind of hype at first. And then I was like, that doesn't mean New York. That actually means China. And then I looked it up and it was like, it's only one admittance. So it meant a denial from NYU, New York. So initially I was like, fuck, this has been my dream school since middle school or whatever. I had this whole, you know, vision for it or whatever, like so many people. But then I was weighing it with my other options, which was like UCSD, UW, and a couple others. And I was like, hmm, none of them really tickle my fancy (laughs) in... (laughs) The same way that NYU 
still does, even if it's in fucking China and not New York. So I like thought about it critically for a while. And I had a whole stage where I had like a, there was like at one point where I was deciding where to go for college, where I got like super insanely homesick. But the thing is I was still at home. Like I was still in my last stage of senior year, but like there was like, when I was thinking about it, I got like really, really like deeply homesick. And Interesting. Yeah. And there, I didn't know this. Yeah. It was, I don't know. It's like a whole weird story. It's like, it, it was like, there was one day where I was sitting in my bathroom doing that thing I do where I procrastinate my showers. So I was like sitting butt ass naked on the floor, just like thinking about where to go. Like, should I go to China? Should I go to San Diego? Should I go to Washington? And then I started crying, actually. Like, I sat there on my bathroom floor and I, like, started crying. But for, like, no reason other than I felt really homesick. Yeah. And I was like, I wonder what that's all about. If I'm feeling (laughs) homesick when I'm still home, it was like a... For me, it was like a... I've already decided where to go. Like, I already know where I'm gonna go. Like, subconsciously? Yeah, like, subconsciously. And it was just, like, all... Like, my main amount of homesickness came to me before I even left. Wow. And it's like an overwhelming decision to like have to make at all, deciding which college you want to go to. Like that's a crazy decision, especially if you have like so many different options and they're all like very different from each other. Yeah. So, and like, I mean, going to college is such a huge decision that sometimes maybe is an underrated thing that we think. It's like, oh, college is fun. College is like obviously something that we have to do. Within our family, at least, like, our family, it was always, uh, we're going to college, no question. But to, like, make a decision that would so heavily impact your life, like, more than you think, too. Because my college experience was a little different. Like, I only really had two options. It wasn't, like, as big for me. And there was only one that was, like, obvious to me. So I basically had no choice for where (laughs) I went to college, you know? So it was, like, not as great of a decision for me. And it, like kind of aligned with like my 13 year old dream of studying abroad in London but making a decision like that is like really huge so like how did you like come to that conclusion Mm, I think it was that between my options there was one close to home which was San Diego there was one medium far from home but not that far which was Washington and then there was China China. (laughs) (laughs) Fucking China. And so what I was mentally prepared for was East Coast far because I always wanted to go far. I just didn't, I didn't plan on going fucking international. Across the world far. Yeah. But San Diego and Washington were not far enough for me because it was that point where I was like super sick of which is not the case anymore. Don't say Um, where we fucking live. Oh, at that point I was- I'll bleep it out. Yeah. At that point I was super sick of where we live and- Right now I'm not because I've had enough time away and I appreciate it more appropriately. But I really wanted to go far and those two were not far enough for me. And it was also that I wanted something a little different from the classic college experience, which is like, "Mm, I want to be different or whatever. Like, (laughs) Like, not in that way. I just wanted it to feel like I could put myself in a different situation like something that was suitable for you yeah something that was suitable for me and I didn't feel any type of way about the other two options that I had I just felt like if I go I'll probably like it but that's about it yeah like, like you're I'll gonna, like it and that's it you're gonna make the most out of anywhere you are yeah exactly but like the one that you were drawn the most to was China yeah and it was also a type of thing where towards the end of high school I was really leaning into the idea of if something makes me like deeply uncomfortable or like nervous or something like that I should probably do it I totally get that yeah yeah I do the same thing and the idea of committing to that one being my home campus made me like very nervous and like uneasy initially I love that. I don't think maybe enough people like lean into their discomfort like that or like let that guide them because I mean as humans we're just like wired to want to stay comfortable so I really appreciate that about you. (laughs) Well Well, your school year just ended. It did. Congrats. Thank you. You're about to be a senior. You're a rising senior. That's crazy. Oh my god. Uh, 
How was your school year? You can talk about the... I completely forgot about this. <laughs> I literally, like, when she's not here, I just kind of, like, try to not think about it. Because, like, it sucks. <laughs> that it I'm sucks not to... Yeah! Like, because then all the attention from our parents is just on me. And I feel this, like, immense pressure. And also, like, I can't share my life with you in the next room, you know? Like... We have a little romantic connecting balcony. Yeah, we have a little Jack and Jill balcony. That we never use. <laughs> we never use because it's like there's bugs and it's dirty and it's gross. Is um, that what that's called? Jack and Jill balcony? Well, the Jack and Jill bathroom, is that's what that's called. So I just assume... That's what ba- that's called? Yeah, Jack and Jill ba- bathroom is when two rooms share a bathroom and they connect. Oh, I didn't know that. Wow, I know something <laughs> that you don't? <laughs> Bro, this bitch is, like, so much smarter than me. Like, her IQ is just, like, crazy. She's like, no. I no. No. I think so stupid, actually. <laughs> um, no, she be popping out these big-ass vocab words. And I'm like, like, the other day she made up a word. And I thought it was this really big vocabulary word. And I was like, fuck. I'm so dumb. <laughs> But she made it up, and that made me feel worse because I didn't. It was a fake, made-up word. Yeah. Anyways, so how did your school year go? I completely forgot that this thing happened to you in the beginning of this school year because I don't know. It just felt like two years ago at this point. Zoe, you have this thing where I feel like you age really slowly. Like she was sixteen for like four years. Yeah. Like my my other friend Clara. She has been in college for 10 years, I swear. (laughs) She's the same. Like, she's so smart and just, like, so ahead of her time and ahead of her age that both of you, I feel like, just age so slowly because you guys feel older. Anyway, sorry. Continue. This thing happened right before she went into her junior year that I completely fucking forgot about because you've also handled it so well. Towards the end of the summer, I had a little bit of a breakup situation, which is like like a pretty common thing, but when these things happen, it is like always a constant reminder that even if your mental state is in complete turmoil, like you don't know what is happening, everything is changing so fast, that the world does not stop. Oh, yes. Yeah, the world does not stop to give you a break. So I went through this whole thing. And then at the same time, I also have to go back to school. I have to start applying to jobs and all of that sort of thing. And it's like you get no time to really process what's happening before you have to keep on moving and doing all of the things that you need to do because life doesn't stop just because you're sad. And I learned that a while ago, but it's, like, always a reminder when something happens. Yeah, it's, like, every time it happens, you're, like, fuck me. Like, I know this happens, and I know life doesn't stop, but, like, in the midst of it, like, in the thick of it, you're, like, fuck, like... Yeah. So it's, like, every single piece of you just wants a bit of quiet and a bit of rest and a bit of time to isolate and process whatever's happening... But you still have to get up and leave the house and talk to people and act like everything's fine. And, and do your fucking happen. homework. Yeah, and do and my like fucking homework. Socialize and like yeah. do everything yeah. that you're supposed to do when it literally feels like your world is crumbling and you're dying from a broken heart. <laughs> yeah. So there was that. I had to do all of that and then I had to leave for New York and, you know, the most mundane things... Like, move-in day, or meeting your fucking RA or something. Like, all of the most tiny things feel, like, so dummy stupid when your brain is in a completely different place. So that was, like, the beginning of the semester mm-hmm. I was in New York. But, you know, it's, it's okay because New York is also, like, a pretty special place where everything is happening all at once, too. And I like New York a lot, so it's, like... Not that it's a good thing to, like, distract yourself from what you're feeling or whatever. But it's a good, like, preoccupation. Yeah, like, healthy distraction is a thing. Yeah, yeah, like a healthy distraction. New York is a big, fun place that I happen to like a lot. So I could do my little running and, you know, I could go to the park or I could do homework in a cool little cafe. And I 
there was like a certain section of my friends that were there too. Like in NYU in junior year, it's common to study away. Sorry, in NYU Shanghai, you're required to study away and it happens during junior year. So it was like half of a section of my friend group that was in New York. So, you know, just by proximity, I got closer to those people too. Yeah. Where did you study abroad? New York? Yeah. That, that was your study abroad? I studied abroad in New York because I really wanted to go to like, I don't know, fucking Italy or something, but mm. I couldn't because of classes. In order to like stay on track for my major and, oh, I actually mostly did it because I have two minors and the one minor, one of the minors that I wanted to do was in New York. So I had to... Mm take those classes in New York. Oh, well, what is your major and your minor? My major is called Interactive Media Arts, which is like a techie design type of thing. It does like emerging media and technology and combines it with like creative stuff. So I've done a lot of like design based classes, like a totally like a bunch of different types of design. I've done coding classes and my minor I have a minor in Chinese and I have a minor in environmental studies because I'm a big fat tree hugger <laughs> girl you did so much more than me I <laughs> majored in psychology <laughs> that's <laughs> it and I also didn't even choose my major until I was a junior so I was so behind on my psych requirements so I didn't know what the fuck I wanted to do I originally <laughs> applied for the arts program at USC and then I applied for the dance program when I didn't get in. And then I didn't get into the dance program either. Not surprising. I'm not a very, <laughs> like, multifaceted dancer. I'm just really good at ballet. And, you know, USC is very, like... Modern. Yeah, modern. <laughs> and, like, you have to know how to choreograph. I'm the worst at choreographing. So I was like, fuck. And the only reason why I didn't want to do psychology was because there was math involved. <laughs> and, like, Miss Girl can't do math, period. And I was like, fuck. Well, psychology is the only thing that I feel interested in and I was also debating between politics and law because I was like really into politics at the time and then environmentalism because also big fat tree hugger (laughs) and um what was the last one philosophy because I've always been really like what is life (laughs) (laughs) kind of kind of girl (laughs) so like those were everything that I was considering and I but I've also loved psychology like I took AP psych in high school and I've always held the opinion that psych classes should be mandatory is what I've always thought because if we understand how we work as humans then it's easier for us to understand each other and that can probably translate to us being kinder to one another because we we know what's going on up here anyways crazy major two minors so good for you you've always been really on top of it like high school she was also really on top of it like she knew exactly what she wanted she knew exactly the kind of experience that she wanted going into high school and she got it. And she was like ultra prepared through the whole college process. How did you come to the decision to major and minor and what you decided? Mm, so I also didn't know what I wanted to major in when I entered college. I totally forgot what I applied as. So what I did was I got all of my core curriculum requirements out of the way first which was easier for me because NYU Shanghai does not have schools. Since it's already a small school within itself, everybody has the same core curriculum. Schools as in like, there are colleges that have different (coughs) schools within the school for different subjects, in case you're not familiar with that. Yeah, so since we don't have that, I didn't have to stress about that. So I did all of my cores in freshman year and part of sophomore year. And then by the end of sophomore year, I had kind of gained a sense of my options because there's also not a lot of options at such a small school. There was pretty much only one major that would actually work for me, which is the one I'm in now. And I chose it because it's under a pretty big umbrella of like different things that I'm interested in and also different things I thought it would be useful for me to learn. And I could use it just in a lot of different ways, depending on what I decided my track to be like within the major. And since I also always wanted to do something creative with my life, and it is a creative sort of major it just kind of made sense there was also like the thing of like i want to do something creative but i also don't want to be broke and that major also kind of paves you into a more 
I would guess the more lucrative side of creative professions. So you didn't choose your major based off of like a career that you wanted. You kind of used a variety of factors to guide your decision, essentially. Yeah, yeah. That's smart. Well, I just actually realized we talked about your first semester in New York, but your second semester was in China. How, How did that go? My second semester was in L.A. No, of this year. Oh, we, yeah, we never yeah, finished yeah. talking about how your entire school year went. Oh, so how did the yeah. rest of your school year go? Sorry. Yeah, it was good. I just I also expected it to be a bit more of a quiet semester because I got back early because most people are normally gone for all of what's it called junior year. So it was a bit more of a quiet semester because not all the friends were there. Mm. But yeah, I kind of grinded and I had a single, so that was a nice. Oh, a room, a single room. Yeah, yeah. Also, for context, we are Chinese, so we're half Chinese, and we have lived in China before for not very long, just a year of our lives, and we visited very often because obviously half of our family lives in China, so we would go like over the winter and over the summer, especially when our great-grandmother was still alive, we would go at least once a year. So it's not like China was like this new thing that like was going to be this huge adjustment. And also both of us grew up speaking and around the Chinese language, Mandarin. So that was also like, we're already familiar with that. And I think probably it was like a good opportunity for you to like strengthen. Yeah. Strengthen your... <laughs> strengthen like your Chinese I mean my Chinese is complete ass now but when you're around it it's like really easy to pick up so it it wasn't this like really novel thing for you yeah yeah it wasn't like a brand new country or anything it was like familiar in the sense that we have spent a good amount of time there so it wasn't as big of a step as other kids at that school because other kids at that school have never been to China before in their life don't speak a word of fucking Chinese And just at the drop of a hat was like, this seems interesting. I might as well go. That would be a bigger step than me. I would still think that for me, it was a pretty big step, but it doesn't really compare to like those kids, I think. Like completely like not Chinese at all. Like total virgin. (laughs) Yeah. Like China virgins just decided to go to China, like out of nowhere. Yeah. I mean, I think that's really cool. And it really like broadens your horizon and your perspective. I appreciate like the international study abroad anything because I went to London my freshman year of college and it just really made me realize how much of a bubble that we live in. Like not just our town because we live in like a pretty small town. I mean, is it small? I don't know because it's in LA County, so it's not small, but the town itself is like very bubble. So like we live in LA, we've grown up in LA, but you know, there's like towns and cities within the broad LA County and like the the little town that we live in is small but it's like really easy for us to get to LA so in that sense like we don't live in a small city but regardless it feels small in the sense that its own atmosphere is very much contained yeah bubble yeah but studying abroad made me realize how much of a bubble I live in not only in my town, but like all of the United States too, because I mean, the United States is so big and I kind of feel like sometimes people forget, like me included. And growing up, I kind of thought that like the United States was just like it. And then I go to Europe and London for a year and I'm like, whoa, there's so much for the world that I haven't seen and there's so much I don't know. And I've grown up my entire life thinking that I know everything but I actually know nothing (laughs) Mm -hmm. so I think there's a lot of value in studying abroad and I think so too I think everybody should I mean obviously not everybody has the resources too but right if they did I feel like everybody should for at least a little bit totally valuable experience we're having some technical difficulties so if the video for this is a little funky donkey my cameras are tired what is it like to go to school in China um, I don't know, because Shanghai as a city is very different from all of China. Shanghai is like a super international city, and you see a lot of things that you see in cities. But if you like left Shanghai, it's like a much different experience. In Shanghai, you have access to like a lot of the comforts of 
home like if you're from any particular place you could probably hunt down like food from your home country if you tried hard enough or something but in other areas of china you can literally only find chinese things chinese food chinese language only china nothing else so my experience is specifically limited to living in shanghai but i like living there because the public transportation is better everything is cheaper food is pretty solid it reminds me of like the asia like the east asian version of a combination of la and new york because it's very big and expansive like la but it's developed in all of these places like new york so it's just like a really fucking huge and like developed city where you can like just do anything you want i don't know i feel like i have more freedom there because mm-hmm. everything's cheaper. It's easier too because China has uh, no. Shanghai is like technologically way more advanced than any city I have ever encountered and you can do like everything through your phone. A little bit dystopian. It is like a little <laughs> bit dystopian, I guess, but that's kind of where the world is headed, this like is true. like everything with phones and technology and whatever in and general, like, the world is slightly dystopian at the yeah, moment just yeah, in I all mean, areas <laughs> exactly, everywhere. Yeah. So, I don't know, I I do everything there and it's like so fucking easy and then I come back here and like some things are just such a hassle and it's like kind of a drag. When you came back, you sent me a Snapchat while you were literally still on the plane and you were like, there's always like a reverse culture shock when you come back. Yeah. The reverse culture shock has more to do with, most of the time it's prices, but when it's not prices, it's about the way that people act. And Americans are obnoxious as hell. (laughs) They're obnoxious and rude and loud and all of the above. And I don't want to come off as hating America or whatever. I don't hate America. For the record, I am a proud American caca. But like... (laughs) Like, it doesn't, it doesn't oh change God. the fact that Americans are fucking rude. I don't mean to generalize either. Obviously, not everybody's like this. I don't want to, like, make any broad statements that are I know. P- that are people incorrect. are going to fucking get so mad about it. Yeah, yeah. It's like, okay, like, disclaimer, not everybody's like this, obviously. I think America's full of very smart, wonderful people. But in public... Literally, the moment I stepped off the plane, I walk and I'm trying to get my bags or something, and then I come across this, like, group of, like, tall white males talking loud as fuck, saying the most obnoxious things, acting like nothing else exists around them. And in other countries, people just aren't like that. At that point, I had come from Shanghai, but I also had just come from Thailand and Indonesia, And in both of these places, they're, like, even more respectful. It's, like, to a point where you notice, like, everybody is nice. Like, genuinely nice. Much nicer than other places that you go. And it's, like, a really nice change than coming from other places like here where it's more, like, everybody is focused on themselves. Which is fine. It's, like, okay that it's more of an individualistic type of country. But when you experience, like, other ways of doing things and operating and how a society as a collective behaves it's like you wonder which one you prefer yeah yeah i was gonna say like our culture or american culture is more of an individualistic culture whereas other countries and cultures might be more collectivistic no no what's the word they have not collectivistic (laughs) okay i made that one up (laughs) Like, they think more as a collective. They have everybody in mind. But there's a word for it. It's not collectivistic. No, (laughs) I don't know what you're talking about. (laughs) Because individualistic, colest... No. Yeah, no. (laughs) (laughs) Whatever. We get what I'm trying to say. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I think it's a good and beautiful thing that Americans function the way that they do. It yields different results than other countries in terms of the unique people that come out of our society. Like if you notice that like a majority of top universities are all in the US and innovation and creativity, like American culture is like the leading culture 
in that sort of thing. So obviously like there's good things that come out of the way that we function. So I don't mean to shit on the US because the US is also like a great place and it's great for a reason, but it's just also great, not great for like a lot of reasons. There's upsides and downsides to yes. every single place. Yes. <laughs> yeah, when you just live in these different places, you kind of pick up all the nice things and pick up all the not nice things. And wouldn't it just be so nice if one place could embody all of those things? That's, that's not called the case. a utopia. <laughs> not Which, the case. No such thing can exist in this world, I think. Yeah. How do you feel about your last year? I don't know. I can't think about it too much. I'm like uh, yeah. uh, already a very... I have a lot of thoughts in this big ass head. I have a lot of thoughts all the time. So I can't feed those thoughts too much. So you, you're just trying not to think about it to the best of your ability. I'm thinking about it, but I'm not okay. thinking about it too much. Because if I think about it too much, I'll send myself into like a little spiral. Yeah. Which is what I always do with these things. I'm like, I am a big noggin, a bit of a philosophical person to a unnecessary degree. Sometimes, and I just think about these things and I run myself in circles about it. Okay. So from, it's, it's <laughs> cut from the same cloth. Yeah. So it's not that I'm like trying not to think about it. It's like good to be prepared for the future or whatever. But when I start thinking about it, We're I not think about it. We're not overthinking it. Yeah. I'm trying not to overthink it because when I do, I think about, oh my God, like I remember what I thought of in middle school. I remember what I thought of in elementary school. I remember what I thought of in high school. I had my thoughts. I was like, oh my God, college is so far away. When I'm in college, I can pick my own classes. I can do all of my own things. And now I'm almost done with college. And then I also think about how our, a lot of our parents met in undergrad. And when we were listening to those stories when we were kids, it was like so far away. It was far away. so far away. We were like, oh my God, college, parents. And now we're in, we're done. We're almost done with that stage. Well, girl, I'm two life. years out. Yeah. I I'm... couldn't even imagine that. <laughs> not me. <gasps> oh my God. Like mm -mm. I, it's not catching up with me. Or I mean, I feel like just now it's catching up with me. Like once I graduated, I was like, nah, I'm still in college land. Like I'm still here. And then a year out, I was like, mm, I'm still here. Now I'm like, oh shit, I graduated. Like, yeah. fuck. And I just hung out with my friend last night, so I was just talking to him about this. Now when I'm looking back on college, like recalling other memories, I have to shuffle through the semesters, like chapters of a book. And it's a little jarring because there's so many fucking chapters now. Like mm -hmm. earlier I was saying like fall, spring, fall, spring, fall, spring. <laughs> freshman, sophomore, junior. That's like six goddamn chapters. And I'm about to have two more chapters. That's eight chapters. That's a pretty long book. Yeah. And that's a lot of different sections to like filter through in your mind. And then it just makes me think like, I am done with college almost. I don't know. And also like I always, I feel younger. I've felt old my whole life. I'm perpetually like 70 years old in my brain. But I also feel like when I was little, it wasn't that long ago at all. Yes. Like, sometimes I still feel like my emo 16-year-old self. Mm -hmm. You know? And then now I look in the mirror and I'm like, hello? Who are you? I pulled a gray hair out of my head yesterday. Oh my god. I have gray hair. Yeah. Yeah. In some ways it feels fitting because I have always had a rather old and cantankerous attitude. But then, like, <sighs> getting there versus just feeling like that yeah. is so weird. Yeah, like each day I get older, the way that I act is more justified. <laughs> and I'm used to it not being justified at all. Like I walk around with my hands behind my back like those old Asian grandpas. Yes. But one day, and one day soon, I'm about to get to that point. And uses big words that I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> or can read a book, a 500, 400 page book in a week. She just started reading Atomic Habits and she's almost done. Like, not even a week has gone by. It took me, like, over a month to read that book. But anyways, this is very soon, but do you have after college plans? I know we all hate this question. I still no, hate, I this question. hate this question. I hope that I can work on my resume and portfolio enough to where by the time I'm done with college, it'll make my chances a little bit better in terms of applying. And after college, I want to take a little bit of time off to maybe chill or travel or whatever. And then I'll also apply to jobs during that time. And I could honestly apply anywhere. I'm open to applying anywhere. But my main 
focus is probably New York. I would love to get a job in New York, which is like so typical, I know, but sue me. I want to live in sue New me. York. Sue <laughs> me. I want to live in New York. Do you have any advice for people going into college? This is like very common advice for people that go to NYU specifically, but I think it also applies to everybody 100% which is that you make your own experience mm. going into college, mm -hmm. which I thought of for high school too, but like for college especially, whatever you want your college experience to be, you can make it happen that way. Some people, when they go into NYU, they expect things to happen naturally, like making friends or something. And that's just like not the case. Like at NYU, you cannot just like make friends if you don't try to make friends like you actually have to try to make friends and choose the classes that you need and are good for you and all that all of that sort of thing i would say that's my main thing is that you need to know what you want in order to have a good experience and you need to intentionally like craft it that way and i think that applies to post-college too but what about for people who don't know what they want if you don't know what you want, that's fine too, because I'm also in that position a lot. But what matters in general, I think, is doing things intentionally. Like, yeah. even if you don't know what you want, that's fine. But you need to intentionally take steps to get there or intentionally take steps that you know are good for you. Like, you can't, if you're not enjoying a situation or, like, your college situation or something, if you're going through something, you can't just, like, blame yeah external circumstances mm -hmm. i think what you're trying to say is like it's up to you to make it a good experience wait that's what you just said yeah i'm not phrasing it very well but like yeah. in it what i mean is that i think people often forget how much autonomy you have over mm. your own life mm, 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 mm. and if you always keep that in mind that you can control even if you can't control what happens to you, you can control your reaction to it, which is kind of controlling, like, the whole thing. Yeah, but it's, like, in a healthy way. In a good You're way. You're not, like, yeah. trying to control things and, like, freaking out if it's not going the way yeah. that you want it yeah. to. But it's, it's, like, a matter of going with the flow, not resisting the flow. Yeah. If you want something to happen, you can always do things to make it happen. Like, we have more power than we think we do, and yeah. sometimes we get stuck in little, like, negative feedback loops, and it feels like everything is out of our control, and there's nothing that we can do about certain things, but there's always something that you can do. Not that it's always easy to do, either. Like, I had a really hard time in college for, honestly, the majority of it. At least 50% of my college experience was horrible, and I didn't have the... I don't want to say awareness, but maybe like the emotional maturity or intelligence to understand that I did in fact have the power to make my experience a good experience because I just felt like everything external was out of my control and I couldn't control the way that I felt about something or the way people reacted to me, but I actually could. And I learned that like halfway through college, that if I wanted to have a better college experience and that was something that I would have had to do for myself. Like, I'm the one creating my experience. I would also say to surround yourself with the right people. Yeah. That's also just, like, a life thing in general. I yeah. feel like throughout my life, I've been lucky with the people that I'm friends with, but also have intentionally made it so, so that the people around me can lift me up in ways that would be harder to do by myself or just are generally positive and uplifting and good people to be influenced by because if I was surrounded by a bunch of people that were not that way I would have turned out very different this is like an atomic habits thing that's yeah. like the section that I just read is that like your environment shapes you in ways that you would never think about yeah or like rubs off on you or something like that yeah in in ways that you can't even control so, like, if you want to become a better person in some sort of way, one thing that, like, one way that you can make it happen without much effort from yourself is to just change your environment into something that will guide you towards that direction. And in this case, like, the people that you're surrounding yeah. yourself with. Because yeah. sometimes it's, like, hard to change your environment. Like, physically. Because, mm -hmm. like, 
not everybody has the resources to move or get out of a toxic environment, but you mm-hmm. do have a certain level of power depending on the relationship to end or start relationships. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Well, thank you for having me. <laughs> okay, I think we're done. Bye. <laughs>